Hello and welcome back everyone to Adobe live from the sofa in the UK. Um, I can see a lot of guys are already in the chat, so welcome everyone. If you do have questions, pop them in there. Today we have Octavia as our guest and of course Rufus who brought Adobe live to the UK. How are you today? I'm good, I'm good. This is the second stream of the day and I'm super happy it's the fourth stream that we do here on Adobe Live for uh, for UK artists and to support the UK community. And I'm, I'm super, super um, stoked to see all of these people coming back in the chat. Emma, Richard, James, Kirsty, Anthony, Robert, Kelly, Helmut, British, <laughs> Sean. Uh, Tim is, of course, here. Tim is our moderator here in the chat, and he's also taking care of all of the background he's like in the uh like he's switching the screens and launching the streams and all of this thing so thank you tim uh for doing this for us lenny isaura keith michael sean hello back hello everybody wow the, it's filling up very very quickly so yeah so i hope you guys enjoy this daily live stream with uk creatives uh, we will go on as long as needed, uh, as long as we're all, um, you know, in our homes and on our sofas, like Stephanie. Octavia is sitting at a desk. Okay, I know, not, I'm not kind quite. of breaking the trend <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, welcome Octavia. Octavia is our creative resident for this year, and she's a fabulous illustrator whose illustrations I have already taken into one of my app designs. So but maybe you can introduce yourself, Octavia. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, my name is Octavia Brummel, but everyone calls me Tink um, because Octavia Brummel is a bit of a mouthful. Um, and yeah, I'm an illustrator based in the UK. I'm based in Dorset, which is in the southwest, in the countryside. Um, and yeah, I've been really looking forward to this. Uh, it's really great to hear. There's lots of people in the chat. If you have any questions as we go along, please just uh, drop them in there and we'd be happy to answer. And yeah, we're just going to hang out on the sofa or at a desk, <laughs> as I am, <laughs> um, and do some drawing. So um, Octavia, there's, there's, there's a word that has been said a few times now uh, from the beginning of this stream, the creative residency. Yes. Do you want to say a few words about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so the creative residency is basically a program that Adobe runs where they fund a year's worth of work on your dream project, on your passion project. Um, and there's nine of us around the world, four in the US, two in Germany, two in Japan for the first time this year, and me from the UK. Um, and so I've been working on an illustration project called The Joyful Every Day, which is based on my personal experiences with mental health. Um, my year's been all about focusing on finding the joy in the little tiny everyday things that you might overlook the first time um, and kind of appreciating them through illustration. Um, which feels very full circle at the moment, honestly. I've been thinking a lot about my project recently because obviously we're all in this crisis and completely odd circumstances for most people. Um, and I've definitely been like getting back to the roots of my project and trying to appreciate the little tiny things that make up my day because everything else is so weird and um, unusual. Oh. So maybe we can switch to your um, iPad screen in that case, because today yes. we're working on the iPad. And uh, maybe you can show some of your work and go through that and tell yeah. us a little bit about it and about your project, you know, the project you've been working on for this whole year. Yeah, sure. Um, so hopefully that's showing up. This is just um, some of my work. And as you can see, while obviously mental health is quite a serious subject, but my illustrations are not very serious. I have a lot of fun with my work. Um, I love using color and a lot of color. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm really kind of inspired by the places I go to. Like I've been to San Francisco a lot with the residency and the interesting, wonderful people I meet, like Rufus and Stephanie, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like to have a lot of fun with my work and I use it as like a therapy tool for myself, but also as a way to kind of connect with other people because as I said, I live in the middle of nowhere in the UK. So being able to do um, digital things like the stream and using my social media, it's um, really nice for me to be able to like talk to amazing creative people all over the world. Um, yeah, so that's some of my work. This is just my website, which is tinkoutsidethebox.com if you fancy looking at more. 
Um, just before I start drawing, I just wanted to say I've actually recently started a positive newsletter. Um, obviously, because we're all going through these crazy, um, weird, scary times. Um, yeah, so once a week, I'm basically sending an email newsletter out with positive news and good things that are happening in the world and the wonderful things that people are doing um, to kind of support each other. And there's a pet of the week and an inspiring quote. And it's, it's a lot of fun and very lighthearted. So if you wanted to sign up, you could do that on my website as well. So Tim just posted the link to Think Outside the Box. And uh, yes, please Amazing. do subscribe to that newsletter of positive thinking. Yeah, and if you have any suggestions, there's um, a space at the bottom where you can share nice things with the world. So yeah, that would be great too. <laughs> um, awesome. Ooh, so I think I'm going to jump across to Adobe Fresco, which is what I'm going to be drawing in today. Um, in case you are unaware, this is the um, relatively new iPad drawing app from Adobe. Um, I love it. I use it all day, every day, and I thought it would be a lot of fun to do a little illustration today. Um, so I've just done a little sketch. This is Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie and me were talking just before the stream about how this could be her <laughs> because she's um, surrounded by all her plants. But this is... Um, so I've recently moved from my studio, I've moved home because obviously UK is under lockdown as most of you will be aware and as a lot many places are. Um, so I had to bring all my plants home because if I'd left them there, they probably would have died and that would make me really sad. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm probably just gonna start drawing and we can kind of chat as I draw. And yeah, if you have any questions about my process or fresco or the universe, then <laughs> we can try and answer them. <laughs> so do you, do you do these sketches on paper before or directly on on the ipad um it kind of varies most of the time i will do it on paper but for this one because i was mm -hmm. a little pressed for time i did it straight on the ipad um quite often i'll do it on like scrap paper and then take a picture on my phone and then just import it into fresco and draw on the top of it um so i've just made the sketch a little bit lighter so that I can see what I'm drawing underneath it and I'll just make a new layer um, and under the favorites I've kind of saved all the brushes that I use very often which is super handy and I'm gonna use the badass brush from um, Carl Webster's brushes which is one of my favorites and like um, I say Kyle just joined my team just a yeah. few days ago so I'm super happy to have Kyle Yes, with us. Yeah. I know, it makes so much sense for him to be an evangelist because I feel like he's been doing that role for a long time anyway. Michelle is asking if you used Photoshop or Illustrator before Fresco. Um, yeah, so I still draw in Photoshop sometimes. Um, quite often I will, um, quite often I'll start in Fresco and then if it's a really big piece, I'll move over into Photoshop. Um, I've got a Wacom Cintiq tablet that I use for Photoshop, but unless it's a really like complex, um, intricate design, most of the time I'll, I'll just draw it in fresco. Um, but I do a lot of my, because obviously it's um, cloud storage, which is great because if it crashes, it's kind of saved. Um, but it also means that I can just open up Photoshop on my desktop and if I want to do some layout designs, um, I run an Etsy shop, so if I'm like turning one of my illustrations into a print, for example, then I can just open up Photoshop and it's kind of there already, which is really useful. So is there a link to your Etsy shop on your webpage, Think Outside the Box? Uh, yes, I think it's just oh, okay, shop good. In, the, in the top okay. banner. Because that, of course, is also a way to support the community in these uh, weird times, um, yeah. you know, to, to buy prints, to buy calendars to buy whatever yeah um, whatever you create yeah yeah i um so i recently opened my shop back up after a bit of a hiatus um and i've been sending out lots of prints mainly actually weirdly enough to the us and canada um which is nice, nice. <laughs> yeah because many many artists right now are struggling with um, with the fact that you know all the conventions the comic cons yeah. all of these things are not happening and um and that was basically a huge um 
income source for many artists uh, mm. around the world to go to these conventions, to have their stand, to send, to sell their prints. Yeah. So yes, um, now we have to support them uh, online. And uh, and I mean, things are still being shipped around and um, yeah, it's just um, us that we can't move yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I think as long as like the postal service is still running, that's kind of I'm planning on keeping my shop open because I mean I buy all of my postage through Etsy, so I literally just drop it in the post box. I don't have to interact with any people, which hmm. um, is obviously a good thing because of social distancing. Simon, that's a good question. No, I do not know which drawing app David Hockney uses. Um, but funnily enough, I was I was in New York at the time when David Hockney was um, simply photocopying his work and uh, and selling the photocopies, and I found that wow, that is like so. <laughs> so uh, it was super super artistic, like to think about photocopies as you know prints. Yeah. Um, but so weirdly enough, my parents actually run an auction house. They sell antiques, hmm. and they're actually selling one of his photocopies. Ah, oh wow! That's yeah, cool. I did. Yeah, so I was in New York when that was in the late eighties. Uh, I was working for art galleries and things like that, uh, doing oh, cool. catalogs, and that's how I, how I was. Um, and I've I've always been a fan of David Hockney, um, you know, from his stage design to um, yeah. to his paintings, um, super. And um, does Fresco come with a Creative Cloud photography package? Uh, Kelly, I'm afraid it doesn't. Uh, that's not part of the, uh, of the um, Photoshop, uh, the photography plan. But parts of Fresco are free. It has a freemium mm -hmm. model. So mm -hmm. you can download like the basic model and use parts of it for free, even without any Creative Cloud subscription. What would you say is the biggest difference between drawing in Photoshop and Fresco? Um, just being able, <laughs> being able to do it on the iPad. And obviously Photoshop is on the iPad now, but I think Fresco is great because it's built with drawing in mind. Um, so it has like features and tools that I use all the time when I'm drawing like masking and it's just really um, intuitive and yeah, I mean, obviously, cloud storage has come to Photoshop now as well, which makes a big difference. But um, that's one of the biggest pluses for me, drawing on my iPad and like not having to worry about storage. Because I used to um, use a different drawing app, which shall remain nameless. But I used to have to like export it at every stage to Dropbox, and then um, yeah, keep going. So. And also, like um, Kyle Webster actually was in the design team for Fresco, yeah. and um, before he joined my team, and uh, he was, yeah, he was overlooking, like overseeing all of the development for the brush dynamics and all of these things. Um, yeah. So it was good to have him in there as well. Yeah, and you get like um, a condensed version of his thousands of brushes that you can get for free as part of a Creative Cloud mm -hmm. subscription, but. Um, the ones that are preloaded into Fresco, he kind of handpicked because he they're like his favorites for drawing, which I think is really cool. And Robert says in the chat that Hockney did use Sketchbook Pro a few years ago when he exhibited at the Royal Academy. Interesting. Cool. Yeah, Sketchbook. No, Sketchbook Pro was um, was quite fantastic, I must say. But now there's Adobe Fresco, and <laughs> truly, I think. Yeah, it's diff I, I don't think there's another app that has the, the cool watercolor dynamics and oil paint dynamics that, that Fresco has. Yeah. So currently, I am just blocking out the shapes of these plant pots. And then once I've got all like the basics marked out, I'm going to go back in with um, the live watercolors and add some color. So if you haven't used the live watercolors before, um, mm. you'll be able to see how much fun they are. <laughs> So what benefits do you get with a paid version of Fresco? So Tim just made a list of what you get with the free Fresco. So the free version of Fresco has all the live brushes and all the vector brushes and 90% of the pixel brushes. Um, so that's a lot of um, brushes already. But of course, the, the benefit of um, the, uh, the, the, the Fresco that is 
interacting with the Creative Cloud is that you can send your work directly to Photoshop, you can send your work directly to Illustrator, you can um, you can save the work on on um, in, in the cloud, so you never lose anything. So basically, it's uh, it's the the cloud integration, like like we call it, that yeah. that gives you benefit from using the um, the CC version. When I go to my CC download to download Fresco, I face the not compatible warning. Does it need more than After Effects? Tung, uh, you need a tablet for Fresco. Fresco will not work on the desktop, at least not yet. That's why I don't have it either. <laughs> <laughs> Are yeah. you telling me you want a tablet, Stephanie? <laughs> I wouldn't say no to that. But the first okay. time and only time I have tried Adobe Fresco was actually in Cape Town in December <laughs> in the Apple Store. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's not as busy as the Apple Store in London. So yeah, that was the first and only time I have tried um, Fresco. And I drew like a graffiti kind of thing <laughs> for my friend I, who I was there. So I, I uh, just, yeah, I drew her name and she's like, what are you doing? Come, let's go stop working on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, it was fun. So all I've done now is I've locked the transparency under the layer settings. You can see it's gets this little padlock on it when you lock the transparency, which means that if I pick a nice color like this purple um, and I can go back in, then it only mm -hmm. fills the shape that I've already drawn, um, which is really great for the, if I zoom in a bit, you can see how the live watercolors are. Yeah, it's a mm -hmm. lot of fun. Just just like a layer mask in, um, in Photoshop, really. Yeah, although you can do layer masks as well. Mm. You're kind of locking the pixels, I guess. Uh. And do you have your color palettes there? Did you um, yes. do them yourself, or is it you can download them like an Illustrator? Yeah. So um, there's certain like the fresco colors are the ones that come mm. preloaded, like swatches. It works just like swatches do in Photoshop. Yes. Um, but I have colors that I use all the time, so I've kind of created. In Adobe Color, I just made some swatches for myself and then downloaded them onto my iPad because I use them all the time. <laughs> so it, it's a lot quicker. I created oh, assets in XD with all of your colors when I got your yeah. Shakespeare drawings. Yeah, I picked them all with the uh, with the eyedropper tool and created assets. Oh, and did you? I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah. So my entire my file, which is with your drawings, uh, has the entire assets with your font with well my font and all of your colors yeah oh cool yeah so there's a couple of things here okay so tim uh posted a whole thing about you know what the benefits are of the paid version of fresco which you know includes a hundred gigabyte of cloud storage access to services like adobe portfolio spark kyle webster brushes and so on and so on so there there are indeed benefits and lisa uh in answer to your question how does fresco compare with procreate um, of course, you know, I, I'm always on the, on the side of the artist. So whatever tool works for you, you know, I will not say, ooh, this is bad or this is good. Uh, yeah. Whatever tool works for you. Um, what I have to say, though, is that, you know, what is so nice with Fresco is that it is so integrated in the Creative Cloud. And like I said, you can send it to Photoshop, you can send it to Illustrator, you can, um, and, you know, and, and, and basically it was created with, drawing and illustration in mind so it is not like photoshop where you know we've added brushes and brush dynamics um after the fact um fresco was really from the ground up developed with the artist in mind and therefore made it making it super e easy and simple uh and and like i said i'm I didn't see these brush dynamics like the watercolors that Octavia is using right now. I haven't seen those uh, in other applications at, at that level of detail. Let's say when you know when colors mix together and uh, and create these um, these fantastic color combinations. Yeah, the the only thing I would add also is obviously um, I'm a professional illustrator and I need to be able to scale my work to work with clients and. Other than the cloud storage, I think the biggest thing for me is how many layers you can have on a document. In Procreate, if it's bigger than an A3 piece of paper, I think you can only have six layers, which um, can be very limiting. 
but in Fresco, it's a standard of a uh, hundred layers. So, um, yeah, for me, that's that's one of my favorite differences. And and the other cool thing I like about Fresco is that you can do things that are not necessarily possible in uh, the real world, like mixing watercolors and oil paints, and yeah. or um, uh, you can you can have uh, you can mix pixel layers with. Um, with vector layers, uh, which is also super interesting for certain types of illustration. So there's, yeah, I mean, it's really the, I've, I've seen people do incredible things with, with Fresco. Um, including Octavia today. <laughs> well, I don't know about incredible, hopefully nice to look at. <laughs> We have Danielle asking, can you get watercolor and oil brushes uh, on Photoshop or Illustrator? Um, you you can. That? In Photoshop, there are some pixel brushes um, mm -hmm. in the Carl Webster brush set, but um, you can only get live brushes currently in Fresco, which is where the surface stays live even after you've um, taken your pen off the digital paper. And Richard is saying, I use Fresco for the 15 illustrations for this interpretation board for our local castle. The link with Photoshop was so useful. Yeah. So let me see your Yorkshire castle. Let me go check mm, that out. I grew up in Yorkshire. Yes? Yeah. Oh, did I not, was I not able to copy that link now? Wait. <laughs> copy. Yes. Sandal Castle. Oh, I see. You did the, the um, you created the, uh, like, you know, the, the board that's in front of the castle where people and tourists come and say, oh, that's the castle and little drawings and things that explain oh, the various parts. Very nice. I love it. Did Thanks for sharing, it? Richard. Did, did you draw the Shakespeare drawings in fresco as well, or was it Photoshop? Uh, it was mainly in fresco, again, mm -hmm. because they ended up being quite, um, well, the file size was massive, as I'm sure you saw by the end of it, because <laughs> they were really detailed. Yes, tell me about <laughs> it. The main, the main <laughs> yeah. job was flattening layers, but I, yeah, my question about is... That stuff. <laughs> <That's fun. laughs> um, but I, I, I drew all of the elements in fresco, but I didn't combine them into a single document in Fresco because I think my iPad probably would have died. <laughs> but then you can. I had like, <laughs> I had like 300 layers in, in oh. the final version of it. So. But then you can just export it to a Photoshop file. Yeah. Even though it's in Fresco. Yeah. That's very cool because obviously XD is compatible with Photoshop. So I opened the Photoshop file from Octavia in XD. In XD. And, and actually, made an app out of it. <laughs> yeah. And if you wanted to see it, I think you made a Behance project out of that, didn't you, yeah. sir? Yeah, it's on my Behance. Um, I can pop the link in the chat if anyone is interested. Yeah, you do that, Stephanie. And what is the white dot on the screen for in Fresco? That's the modifier key. Basically, you can place it wherever. And when you press it with your thumb or any finger, like the tool can change from from a pencil to a to a to an eraser or whatever you program it to do. So if I, I've currently got a pixel brush selected. I'm using the Happy HB, which is like my favorite pencil texture. Um, and if I turn it on at the moment, you double tap it to turn it on. And then you can see it erases with the texture that I've just been drawing with, which is really useful because the normal eraser has a really like harsh edge. So if you want to do any shading or you don't want a really clean line, then it can be really useful to, oh, I've got the eraser selected. Then you can see it, it is actually rubbing out with a pencil texture, which feels a lot more natural. How long have you been drawing for? Um, properly about three and a half years, four years, something like that. Um, yeah, so if you aren't aware of my story, I actually had a nervous breakdown about five years ago now. Um, I was studying in London and it was 
way too fast paced and stressful. I was studying journalism, which with hindsight was a terrible idea because <laughs> I really don't like having awkward conversations with people. So like having to try and get <laughs> a good headline was uh, a bit of a nightmare. Um, and I moved from London where I studied for five years to my childhood home in Dorset and yeah, started drawing as therapy to start with, which um, I feel incredibly lucky that I'm able to kind of do my therapy as my career. It's uh, a real privilege. Nova is asking, why are all the layers locked? So the reason all the layers are locked is before I went back in and went over them with like a watercolor texture, I just drew like white solid block shapes to start with um, so that I could get a clean edge. And then I just went back in with the watercolor and I got this nice watercolor texture, but it's restricted to like a clean shape. That's just the way that I like to draw. <laughs> and you don't have to name the layers in Fresco? Um, so okay. the names aren't shown, but you, if you click on this um, tool up here, you can rename them. So I could uh, make this okay. one. long leaves or something. Um, which so let's, is uh, let, really yeah, let, let's ask in the chat, like, you know, are you team life is too short to name your layers or are <laughs> you team, you know, <laughs> life is complicated enough not to name your layers? I'm well, definitely let's hear you in the chat. <laughs> I, I normally if I'm in fresco, I never bother to name it. And then the moment that I take it into Photoshop, I'm like, oh, my God, why haven't I named anything? This is a nightmare. I think it also depends on what career you have, because I have always named my layers because I have always worked with developers. And when back in the old days, when you gave them a Photoshop file of a website draft, um, they had to understand what is what. So you just want to make your colleagues life easier, right? So I have always named layers, but my business is a different one. So probably you don't need to name every leaf if no one is going to develop it at the end, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I probably only bother to do it if I am, like you said, if I'm going to be working on the file with someone else. Yeah. Yeah, here, Tony, Tony Harmer. Tony Harmer, who is going to be with us tomorrow. Welcome to the chat, Tony. Um, yes, Tony, well, for just you, I usually don't talk about who the next guest is, but since Tony's here, Tony will be giving his favorite tips and tricks in Adobe Illustrator tomorrow from noon to one here on the Adobe Live from the sofa. So mark your calendars. That's going to be good. And then, oh, I name my layers. I have to name my layers. I just have to. Okay. <laughs> I don't name my layers. Uh, all, I, all I do is just, uh, what? Ah, Photoshop as it comes. Okay, life is too short. That's why I name my layers. Oh, okay, <laughs> very good. This is, you know, the, when you start that conversation in the chat, it's like, <laughs> you know, do you say, do you say GIF or do you say GIF? You know, like. <laughs> oh, I have no idea. I just try and avoid saying it because I'm worried that I'm gonna come across like a bit of an idiot because I don't know how to say it. So I'm just like, you know, those moving pictures. Moving like, yeah. Thingies, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always say GIF. <laughs> Munir is asking um, to you, Rufus, and me, if we plan to do streams for XD. Yes, definitely. Um, as you know, this I started these streams um, uh, this Monday. That was our first daily live stream from the sofa. Um, and uh, we are planning the calendar for the next weeks already. Um, and I'm pretty sure that you know there will be Maybe not necessarily for, you know, it's not like I'm saying, you know, this session is about um, uh, Adobe Fresco. No, this session is about Octavia Brummel and her uh, art and her drawings, and she happens to use Adobe Fresco. So if we're thinking about, you know, guests that are in, um, in uh, interaction design or in user interface design and things like that, of course, you know, I would prefer the tool to be Adobe XD. But that's, you know, this is how I approach these uh, these streams. I really want to uh, to highlight, you know, the creativity in the UK and also get together the creative community uh, in the UK here in the chat, and then so that it always grows. And you know, we're all in it together. And uh, I think this is a nice way to involve UK creatives and also yeah. 
uh, involve you, the, um, the creative community in the UK? I mean, speaking just from my own personal experience, I think it's more important than ever to do this kind of thing because it's like you were saying earlier, we don't have the, we can't go to conferences or um, talks and like physically meet other people in the industry and in like surrounding industries. So yeah, I think digital stuff is more important than ever. And Matthew is asking, are the live streams Monday to Friday? Yes, they are. Yes. So is it okay to mention about another sketch app? Of course, Tonk, you can, but maybe we already talked about it. You maybe, I don't know, ask your question and we'll see. <laughs> and I can always choose to ignore it, but <laughs> I typically don't. <laughs> this is a safe space. <laughs> this is a very safe space. Yeah. Yes. We have someone whose name I can't pronounce asking, how do you group the layers? Ah, it's super easy. All you do is, if you click and hold on a layer, you can see that it like pops out and you can grab it. So for this one, for example, I'm gonna take the pot and you just drag it and drop on top of the other layer, which is how I've, if I zoom out, you can see I've just grouped the little plants, which means if I wanna move them around or readjust them or anything, um, it's really easy to go back in and do that. Oh, okay. So Octavia, so Richard is asking, Octavia is limiting the watercolor to the white blocked, uh, blocked in shapes, but I'm trying it and I cannot, uh, I can't work out how she does that. Can you just maybe just do a shape and like show yeah. how you make a layer mask or how you, yeah, how you sure. created that? So I've just put the colored background back on just so I can see what I'm doing. Um, so I've just made a new layer. I'm just going to do a little heart. Um, fill it and then all you do is is under the layer settings thing which is down these three dots next to at the bottom here and then if you go lock transparency um and then i'm going to pick up a live brush so i'm just using the watercolor wash soft that's kind of my favorite texture to use obviously change the color from white because that wouldn't show up at all um and then you can see that I'm kind of drawing outside it, but it's only filling that spot. Whereas mm -hmm. if you were drawing, if I was to do a different layer and just draw, that's what it would look like without the restriction. So, um, and the edge is really, well, it's like real paint, which is wonderful for certain things, but I like my illustrations to have quite a clean look. So I much prefer, um, as you can see, having, well, it's actually a textured edge, but it's a lot more controlled. Mm -hmm. Turn that colored background off so we can see what I'm doing again. So I think, Tonk, we went through the, the benefits of using Fresco um, uh, extensively already, I think. Um, mainly, you know, the fact that it is Creative Cloud um, driven, that, you know, you can share your files. Uh, you can uh, go directly to Photoshop, to Illustrator. You have access to uh, all of Kyle Webster's brushes. Uh, you have the watercolor dynamics, the oil paint dynamics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And like I say, um try it out there's you know it's yeah. free uh you know with with uh, very few limitations um and uh and check it out like like i say i'm an advocate for the right tool for the right job and you know if it's not yeah, presto you know i'm i'm not going to get i'm not going to get angry with anybody uh that's i i just want people to be able to be creative and um and do the, the their best work I think, it's I, think exactly Fresco, I think Fresco is amazing. Yeah, I mean, I do as well. And it's a genuine, I've been using it for over a year now because I was on the beta before it came out. And as I said, I, I exclusively used Procreate before and I only use Fresco now um, because I personally prefer it. But I could also completely agree with you. And I think it's like using a different brand of paint, like physical paint people prefer different types of paint and mm -hmm. that's fine. If we all use the same tools, it would all look very similar. So I think diversity is great, but I just happen to personally love Fresco. <laughs> we had Hannah asking earlier, how do you monitor your success? And is there anyone you look up to for inspiration in your creativity? Oh my gosh, so many, like an infinite number of people I look up to. I I think also, especially because I live really rurally in, in the UK, um, 
I follow a lot of people on social media and I'm constantly inspired by the wonderful things that they're making and the fact that it is always completely different to what I'm doing, which I think is the great thing about the creative industry. Um, what was the first question? How do I measure success? Yep. God, how long's a piece of string? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, obviously I, I run an Etsy shop, um, which I absolutely love doing. So I definitely get a gauge on like the kind of work that people enjoy from that. And um, the same goes for my Instagram, I guess. Um, but honestly, I think it's when I get to work with um, brands and companies that mean a lot to me. So um, I have been working with the Samaritans recently, the charity on um, some products for their online shop, which has been amazing because they actually saved my life when I was 19. They're like a mental health support line. So that's been really wonderful. Um, I've recently been doing some work with Flow Magazine, who I have been following and admiring for a really long time. So yeah, I, th I think everyone has different metrics of success in heavy quotation marks. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. How, how do you, know, you measure my, success? My, <laughs> my, me my measure of success is are you happy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that has to be the number one thing. Mm -hmm. And I think quite often people can kind of chug along nicely with their life and not really think about whether it's actually making them happy, which is kind of where the joyful everyday came from. Cause I definitely, mm -hmm. I was guilty of that a hundred percent. I was just kind of following a life plan that I thought made sense and I was miserable. And now somehow I, <laughs> people seem to keep paying me to draw things. So <laughs> it's, yeah, it's wonderful. Dorina was asking earlier, what are we designing today? Me in my living room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Stephanie's decided this is going to be her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> at the moment, it's just a bunch of plants. I think I probably was slightly ambitious with the sketch. I don't think I'm going to be able to finish, but um, I will definitely finish this straight after the stream. So if I don't finish it, um, you can check it out on my Instagram or my Twitter, which I think the links are below. Do you draw everything like from sketch, every plan from sketch, or do you also sometimes just copy and paste it? Because that's what I did when I got your drawings. I just copied and pasted some of your plans and put them in my mobile format because you drew it landscape and my mobile is portrait and then I just copied some layers with your plans and put them uh, somewhere again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I have probably occasionally done that. But honestly, I think I really enjoy drawing. That's kind of why I do it. Um, I think there's, there's been occasions, especially when making a pattern or something, um, quite often I'll use different elements from lots of different drawings and kind of combine them into one, like in a Photoshop document. Um, but other than that, I don't, I don't really think so. I don't, not really. I, I definitely have like references that I use again and again. So if you look at these plants and then look at the plants that I've drawn before, for example, you'll probably see similarities because I think that's just part of my style, but um, I don't think so. I don't, not really. Although having said that, I'll probably now do it like constantly for the next month <laughs> well i had to do it because i can't draw like you so <laughs> i just had to work with yes. what i got <laughs> so interestingly interestingly even if you know if you're starting to draw and things like that and even if you want to have like really cool results you should also know that you can import pictures into yeah. fresco and then paint over them and if you go to my twitter which is twitter.com slash rufus d i've i think i've pinned an image of my beagle that I painted with yes. um, fr frescoes oil paints, and it that looks so super. Good. It looks good, right? It, it really like <laughs> but, I was I was but, very impressed with it. <laughs> but but I cheated. <laughs> <laughs> I just painted over the photograph. I love my dog, so I painted very nicely and and carefully. But yeah, it's a really good painting. I I remember seeing it and thinking how cute your dog was. Let me put it here. I think that's how it works now.
Natalie is asking, um, I'm currently using a sixth generation iPad and would like to buy the new Apple Pencil. It's not compatible with the old iPad. Would you recommend uh, to upgrade to a new iPad or get the old Apple Pencil? Um, I mean, I guess it depends a lot on your budget restraints and how much you think you're going to use it. There's definitely nothing wrong with the first generation Apple Pencil. I used that until very recently. Um, and I would also say that the new Apple Pencils, uh, sorry, the old Apple Pencils are also new, compatible with the new iPads. So, yeah, I think it depends on your budget. I mean, obviously, I think it's good to have the best tools that make sense for, for what you do. But I, I mean, for the longest time, I didn't even use an Apple Pencil. I had a really old iPad and I just bought a really rubbish um like third party stylus from Amazon. <laughs> That's kind of how I got started with illustration. So I think it's just whatever works. Um, but personally, I'm <laughs> I'm quite a scatterbrained person sometimes. And I cannot tell you how many times I lost my old Apple Pencil, whereas the new one is attaches magnetically to the iPad. <laughs> so I never lose yeah. it. So And that's how it charges as well. Yeah. So which is so cool. So you don't have to plug it in anymore. You just Lay it over here, puff, and yeah. it's attached. And exactly. what I really like about it is that you know it it is, has the size of a pencil, it has the weight of a pencil, it has yeah. um, the feeling of a pencil. And you know even if, if even if you draw like on the side, it'll take pick it up. If you draw on top, it'll pick it up. That kind of line. Um, and if, of course, pressure sensitive. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, I actually last week I had to change. The nib on my Apple Pencil because I wore through to the metal, <laughs> which is probably a sign of how much drawing I've been doing, especially under lockdown. Do you draw that font at the moment, or do you have the option to also add uh, text layers in Fresco? Uh, no, you can't add text layers yet. I think okay. you can add, can you add text layers to Photoshop or the iPad? Uh, yes. iPad, I don't know. I think yeah. so, um, but not not Fresco yet, at least. But again, because it's Photoshop compatible, I mean, all you'd need to do would be save the file, and then, as I said, it literally appears on your desktop, so you can go ahead and add text afterwards or in the middle and then open it back up on your iPad. It's really easy. So how do you manage to draw the font so close to the font that you have? <laughs> uh, years of practice. <laughs> yeah, it's, my, it's basically my handwriting, but it's definitely developed over the years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got your font and I, I used it in XD, but then um, I converted it to a path. So when people download the XD file, they can actually see it. Yeah, so I have actually made, I just made a little font out of my handwriting, just like for my own personal use, which I sent over to Steph when we were working on this app together, which mm. was really fun. Um, but to be honest, I only really use that if I'm doing like poster design or flyers or something for my website. Most of the time I just draw it. Did you use Font Self? I did. Yeah, Font Self is such an amazing extension yeah. to photoshop and uh an illustrator where yeah, basically you can you can create all the letters a to z and number numbers one to zero um and then just select them and say make a font and it makes an open type font that you can immediately use and share with anybody and uh it's called yeah. font self so if you want to yeah maybe maybe um tim can put a link in it font self is for anybody who wants to create a font it's really the easiest way. Yeah. If you want to go more professional, of course, you would go to, to you know, the real font applications. But it does a really great job at kerning and at all of these things. It's pretty yeah. impressive. I actually met the wonderful people at Font Self at Adobe Max in LA last year, and that's how I ended up making my own actually. So yeah, would definitely recommend it. And it's also really intuitive. Because I think, like, I was definitely daunted to make a font because, I don't know, it just felt like this really unimaginable thing because I'd never done it before, but it was actually really easy. 
I really so like this song. Oh. No. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, I like yeah, no, it. I, is, I, uh, I put the headline like still in, even though it's a mobile app and you always have to think of which font are web compatible and blah. Um, but I, I really like to still use it as a headline and just um, yeah create a path out of your font so it's visible. So James is saying, it's a shame to see that Fresco app requires specific features not available on my iPad device. Would anyone recommend any alternative options? So my question is, what iPad do you have? Of course, you know, to be able to draw in any application like uh, with Fresco or, or the others, you, you need, you know, pen access uh, because that's the easiest way. Um, otherwise, you know, uh, I don't know what, what, you, what you mean, James, with features that are not available on your iPad. The only one I can think of is the drawing features. Need some water, I'll be right back. Okay. All right. <laughs> Is getting water to water your plants <laughs> <laughs> virtually. <laughs> That's actually on my to-do list for today is to, I have a really snazzy little app that tells me when I have to water my plants. Really? I now I have the self-watering globes. I don't know if you can see them, but they're in all of my plants. And then whenever they're empty, cool. I just refill them. So yeah. <laughs> Very cool. That feels really futuristic that you your plants water themselves. <laughs> Matthew, does Kyle constantly update his brushes? Well, you know, some brushes need updating. You're right uh, for, you know, maybe new versions and things like that. But I also know Kyle is constantly working on new brushes, on new styles, on new, you know. And if you go check out all of his brushes, there's literally brushes for any type of illustration yeah. from manga to... Um, uh, to, to oil paint, to whatever. And actually, if you if I click on the pixel brushes, um, mm -hmm. if I go back to all, if you click this little plus right at the bottom, um, I'm not going to click it because it'll open up the web page, but it takes you directly to the Kyle's Brushes web page, um, and they're all like neatly divided into packs of like manga or. Um, there's one of like photocopy marks that make it look like it's really like old school piece of paper that you photocopied a hundred times is really cool. And there are literally thousands is, I have spent days of my life exploring them and it's a lot of fun. Like I always say, when you open this Kyle brushes page for the first time, the first thing you will see is the Kyle brush mega pack. Yeah. Don't take that one. Don't take that one. Okay, <laughs> because this this is this can be very overwhelming because it has so many brushes that you get yeah. lost. And um, so my my advice is when you go to Kyle brushes, like pick the one that you know that this, that represent the style you want to work in, yeah. and start with those. Okay, don't start with a mega pack. The mega pack <laughs> sounds cool because it has everything, but. It needs organization, it needs understanding, it <laughs> needs a little bit of practice. <laughs> Matthew is also asking, is it best to download from his site or the Adobe site? I don't think I don't think he has a his own site anymore. I think it's part it's part of the Creative Cloud because Kyle joined us over two years ago. And that included the brushes. How did you develop your drawing style? Have you always drawn like that, or do you have different? Have you tried out different styles in the past? Um, I think it's a bit of a combination. I think everyone, everyone has like natural ways that they draw, but. It's also definitely something that I've developed over a really long time. Um, that's kind of the most common question I get asked, especially if I'm doing um, like a workshop or I give a lot of talks, um, is always, how do you find your illustration style or how do you um, figure out what your style looks like? And 
honestly, I think you just have to draw a lot of things. I think it's um, probably a bit of an unpopular opinion because I think people quite often want a quick fix for it. But I think the reality is it's okay to like be developing a style and how you draw right now is your style, but you don't need to really see it as like a destination. You don't like suddenly wake up one day and you've got a style and you can kind of move on with the rest of your life. It's very much like a developing thing. Um, so yeah, I think you just have to work on it really. Yeah, when I was at uni, we also had to draw with pencil. We had to uh, do oil painting, aquarelle painting, and all of them, like, I would say, look different. I did not ha ever have a style in that, but it was just, I think it was because at uni, you try out everything, you learn the practice yeah. and this kind of stuff. And then once you find your career, you move on and you you kind of find it, right? I mean, I, I never uh, draw again. <laughs> Because I, I was more into that digital um, thing and everything that was on, on a screen and web and this kind of thing. So mm. I, I just put it aside. But I liked it at the time. It was fun. Yeah. And like my style, even in the last year, has changed so much. I think it's always going to be like anything. The more you do it, the better you get at it, I think. So, um, mm. yeah, I think it's always developing. So Shioban, um for drawing and working in, in Adobe Fresco, would you recommend iPad Air 2019 or better iPad Pro? Um, I think the new iPad Air supports the Apple Pencil, and basically that's the important thing. Um, and But yeah, you better check. Uh, I think Tim posted a list of supported um, devices uh, earlier on. Maybe he can post it again um, and just check. Yeah, I think it's any and iPad that can work with an Apple Pencil. Yeah, and like I say, before making any type of decision on buying something that you know that is quite expensive, like a, a Wacom, an iPad, or things like that, try it out and see you know see if you have a friend or colleague that has one, and you know borrow it for a few days, just to see if 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 it is indeed the tool for you um, before making that purchasing uh, decision. I yeah, and you can also like no. if you go into the Apple Store, you can try it out on an iPad as well. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to decide, and I think I think I think Fresco is is pre-installed on the on the iPads and the Apple Store, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. That's where I tried it. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Daniel. Finding brushes works the same for Photoshop. In Photoshop, uh, you there is you go in the uh, in the brushes panel and you say you, you there's a, a sub menu that says more brushes and it'll it'll bring you to the um, to to the brushes pages and you can download them from there and so once you have drawn the face you group all of the elements in the face to one layer yeah especially cuz i ended up wanting to tweak it a little bit and change the proportion slightly. So, okay. But they're not flattened. It's just more like a group, is it? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah so the layers are still preserved. It just kind of makes mm. it neater when I'm looking at this. I can see. It's mainly, honestly, it's mainly for if I want to move it, if I want to move the layer. So I'm actually grouping all of this person into one because then obviously um, if I put the plant pot in there as well if I go move you can move the whole thing mm -hmm. if I put the details in I hear a, I hear a scratchy sound is that because you have paper like on your iPad or no uh, yeah yeah you have paper like okay because many people ask that as well you know like um, some people yeah. don't like the iPad because it's too it's too uh, slippery and yeah. uh, things like that so you know some people like you Octavia put on that foil basically which is yeah. which makes it feel like paper yeah it's basically like a matte um screen protector for your ipad but i think also especially because like you were saying one of the main differences that i really like between the old apple pencil compared to the new one is the new one also has like a matte texture to it the actual pencil mm -hmm. which feels more like a pencil um and yeah i really i it makes a big difference to me having the the screen protector as well because 
otherwise you're kind of skidding all over the place a bit or at least I was this probably says more about my pen control than anything else <laughs> Do you have all these plants at home? I do have a lot of plants. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I, I, I think it, I can, I try and justify it to myself because I'm like, well, I draw plants all the time. So I can definitely justify getting another one. Um, yeah, I, I have a lot of plants. I think I just love being surrounded by, I think that's one of my favorite things about living in the countryside generally is I love being surrounded by green things and nature and animals. So that definitely spills over into my, my studio. Like yours. Yeah, I, I love, yeah, I, I live in the city of London and yeah. there are not many plants outside. So I just brought them all inside. <laughs> you know, it's meant to, I think it's meant to help you sleep better if you have them in your bedroom. Yeah, especially I have a pineapple growing over there and that is <laughs> apparently the best thing that generates the best oxygen for a good night's sleep. And plus, if the lockdown gets really serious, you know, you could live off the pineapple for a bit. <laughs> Definitely. And Simon, I uh, would really like to try to end, replicate the original aquatint etching style of the 18th and 19th century. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a clear image in my mind, but maybe that's one question that we can um, have for Tony Harmer tomorrow. Uh, he will be doing his um, illustrator um, tips and tricks, and I, I think I've seen uh, plugins for Illustrator that um, from Astute Graphics that like help getting there quicker. I know that etching, it, this is something you know, like I live in Florence, and you know, like I like this all this Renaissance kind of thing, and uh, also the etchings. And uh, I've, I just know that it, it it is a lot of work to to get there, um, unless you know you you do a real one. I don't know. Uh, but it's difficult. But let's ask Tony tomorrow. And Richard asks you, does the screen film reduce the sharpness of the image? Or is the image, like, does it change the image of the iPad when no. you're working on paper-like? No, I mean, I don't, I don't find it does at all. Hmm. And the other thing that people ask, you know, when you put a film on your, uh, like, not here right now in the chat, but that question always comes up, is like, does it... Um, does it add a, a layer that you know that takes the pencil away from the screen so you don't you don't see the exact line you're making and i can confirm that it doesn't no and also you can calibrate within fresco and in the I, ipad settings you can actually calibrate how sensitive the pencil is so you can make it like it picks up every sudden mm -hmm. movement that you do or like smoother as well um which is really handy so i think i'm just going to spend one minute adding details to these plant pots and then i'm i actually i'm surprised that i managed to mm. fill it out so gold like, star for me <laughs> you have you have one more minute go oh my god <laughs> no, just just kidding we can go Bring over a few minutes of no light. worries <laughs> But what I love about it is even though it's so stylized, I can still recognize some of the plant kinds. So what, what exactly? Aww. Yeah, that's really cool. That's why I was asking you, do you have them at home so you see them and then you yeah. stylize them in a way? Because they really do exist. I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, I mean, as I said, I definitely, I do have most of these plants at home. And then I also have like countless Pinterest boards. Um, Mm -hmm. <laughs> of photos of beautiful plants that I don't own yet, but I will. And James says, looks very vibrant, Tink. Love the watercolor texture. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I do love the watercolor texture. It's because I actually, so I basically draw digitally most of the time, mm -hmm. but I also love using watercolor and gouache paint like in, in real life. I get this mm -hmm. is in real life too, but you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Like old school painting. So, um, <sighs> Yeah, I love being able to replicate the texture. See, this cactus is right there. 
It's a prickly <laughs> pear cactus, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I have that too. And it got babies, as you might be able to see. Yeah. You'll have to you'll have to propagate it and send me some. Yeah, I will. <laughs> With the post. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean, um, Simon. Let's pick up the conversation tomorrow and try to see if what we can do there. Uh, Munir wants the streams to be much longer, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I decided that these live streams from the sofa are going to be only an hour with a few minutes that we can go uh, over time. But I think one hour is a nice way to meet with the community uh, on a daily basis. Um, had I said it's two or three hours, you know, many people would have said, ah, that's too long. No thanks. But I think one hour over lunch, we can stay together a little bit, chat in the, in the, um, in the chat here and uh, with our guest artists. And uh, I think it's, it's very, very nice to have you all here. That's nice feedback to get, though, that they want it to be longer. <laughs> yeah. It's better than them wanting it to be shorter, I suppose. Yeah. And Matthew is saying, thank you all. The live streams are keeping me sane. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew, for that feedback. And this is exactly why we're doing that. We want all to remain sane. And we're streaming from the sofa <laughs> to stay in contact with you. Oh, Kelly is saying, one hour is perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Kelly. Also, Matthew agrees. Thank you. I'm amazed at how quickly the guests make their pieces. An hour sounds good for all. Yeah, that's right. You know, of course, you know, there's maybe if it's a more complex artwork or things like that, it can take over. Are you going to publish this, Octavia, to your? Yes, I'm going to put it on my Instagram media? and my Twitter okay. and everywhere else. All right. Ta da! Ta da! Finished. Um, one final thing that we could do before we go mm -hmm. is play the time lapse if you wanted to. Oh yes, let's let's show show how that works. That so is someone so cool. was asking earlier about like connecting with people, and um, mm -hmm. I love sharing the time lapse of my drawings, especially on social mm -hmm. media. It's really fun. So Fresco does that automatically. Yeah, it yes. records every stroke oh. that you make. Which is really useful. <laughs> and while we watch the time lapse of Octavia's um, painting coming to life, hi, this is so cool. I, I, you know, <laughs> I shouldn't be I shouldn't be speaking over it. But what I wanted to say is we will be back tomorrow uh, from uh, noon to one uh, with Tony Harmer tomorrow, who's going to be showing us his favorite tips and tricks in Adobe Illustrator. So, you know, some of you have asked in the chat, oh, can we have a bit maybe more technical information as well sometimes? So I'm trying to really have a mix of things that are happening. So we have illustration today. Uh, we have incredible guests uh, over the past week. All the replays are below that page. You can, you can find them on Behance. Um, and um, uh, yes, we had Dan Mumford, illustrator, on Monday. We had Tina Tooley, graphic designer, on Tuesday. Um, Craig Black yesterday, lettering artist and uh, mural artist, which was super interesting as well. Octavia today and Tony Harmer tomorrow. And of course, we're going to continue next week as well with our live, uh, live streams from the sofa. But now the illustration is done. And as you've yeah. seen, the really cool uh, time lapse that Adobe Fresco did. And with that, I thank you, Octavia, for taking the time uh, to come into our creative lives and inspire us. Oh, um, thank you for having maybe me. Maybe try and something like that. And of course, thank you so much to you, Stephanie, uh, for co-hosting with me. And uh, I'll be seeing you tomorrow, Stephanie. And yes. Octavia, I hope to be seeing you very, very soon in the very near future. Yes, and thank to you to the community. And um, uh, you're all fantastic. Um, and I hope to see you all again tomorrow. So take care. and. Stay safe. Bye. Thank you. Yep.